Apples. Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look in detail at the Alaris by Phobos Knives. Now I brought this knife out before and that was part of the general introduction to Phobos Knives where I brought out three different variations and talked about them briefly. And I got to tell you, today's not probably the best day to do this, unfortunately. I'm kind of in a bad mood about all this shit. I have tried for three days to get out into the backyard where all the trees are and everything and chop down some branches and, you know, make little spikes and do some feathering and stuff like that. But it has done nothing but rain all throughout the early portion of this week, making all the wood incredibly wet and very difficult to work with and not really probably the best examples to show you on camera. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to feed in a few images from the initial brand presentation that I made where I showed all three knives and I was able to take this outside and do some cutting, do some hacking, do some shaving, do some feathering and show you that yes, this is a highly capable knife. And I know it sounds funny to talk about well, here's a cool knife, and you really should be using it because we talk about collecting a lot, and the knife collectors are no different than anybody else collecting anything. I don't care if you're a car collector. You're going to see somebody at the Cars and Coffee every month, and you're going to see this gorgeous Ferrari that he drives. And you know damn well he's never driving the damn thing. He spent all this money on this this beautiful machine, and in your opinion, he's not using it to its actual potential. Well, its actual potential would be on the racetrack, and not a lot of guys can afford to go out there and weekend warrior in a friggin' quarter million dollar Ferrari. Here's the thing. When it comes to knife guys, when you get into the EDC collectible end of the community, a lot of times you're going to meet people that buy a knife based on how it looks, the materials that are being used, how it feels, how the action is, if it's a folder or an automatic. And their main joy is just owning the knife and looking at the knife and admiring the knife and fiddling and, and playing with the knife a little bit. And maybe on the very odd occasion, cutting a string or cutting open a uh, package from Amazon or something. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And the reason I bring this up is I see a lot of people give people a lot of crap online about, oh, you don't actually use your knives. They paid their money for that knife and they're getting the enjoyment out of it that they expected. They wanted maybe like a piece of art hanging on the wall. They wanted something beautiful that they find attractive that they want to just look at or they want to fondle and they want to touch and they want to play with, kind of like your high school girlfriend. Or maybe they're actually going to use and abuse it. Hopefully not like your high school girlfriend. And... I think that that puts people in different categories. Number one, you should never judge anybody for what they spend their money on and how they choose to use it. However they get their enjoyment, let them be. But the reason I bring up the actual use of a knife when talking about Phobos is they're designed for practical application. They're designed to be used. They're extraordinarily tough. This particular knife is in CPM 3V, so... It's not only going to be great for cutting, but it's going to be great for light chopping as well because that edge is going to hold up against chipping or rolling based on the fact that it's 3V and it's heat treated and cryo-tempered properly. So this is a true workhorse and a performer. It doesn't just look good. And I'll be the first to admit this is not the most attractive of all the Phobos knives, but... For me, this ended up being my favorite of the three that I received because of the blade shape, all of that belly, all of that cutting edge, a very strong reinforced tip, and the way the edge drops down below your fingers so you can actually do some cutting without your hand getting in the way. All of that is all by design. It's meant to be used, and it's meant to be comfortable in the hands while it's being used. Eric Hansen puts a strong focus on the utility of his knives. Sure, they look great, especially when we go back to the Tier 1 BC. That may be a knife that many people buy just because it's a great-looking tactical-style knife and may not actually have an intended use for it beyond maybe carrying it every now and then, showing it off to their buddies, 
and having a really great knife in their collection. This is a knife that you just look at it and think, that looks utilitarian. That looks like it should be used. It looks like something that maybe you pulled out of your kitchen butcher block because of the overall shape of blade. It's not because, my God, how thick that blade stock is. This would be a little bit difficult to do all those kitchen things with. It is meant to perform in almost every possible respect if you're doing anything outdoors or you're just tearing shit up. You're cutting down a whole bunch of cardboard boxes in your garage and you just want to get them all cut down and slice through it like a, a hot knife through butter. This is going to be that knife. And if you want to go out there and actually do outdoorsy shit and you have to, I don't know, build a shelter and you have to... I don't know, what, what all, whatever it is that you choose to do out there, as you can tell, I am not an outdoorsy kind of guy. Um, but if I had to break down some kindling and I had to, to feather some wood and make it a little bit easier to start a fire and all that sort of stuff, I want to make a little, little spear for some spear fishing because, yeah, that's exactly what I'd be doing. This is the knife that I would choose to take out there with me. I've got a lot of great fixed blades that I enjoy for a lot of different reasons. Most of them are very compact and good for everyday carry. This is not that knife. This is the knife that if I were planning some sort of outdoor excursion, I would look past all of those other fixed blades and probably focus very heavily on this one because I feel that this one is going to do absolutely everything that I want it to do and not be lacking, not leave me wanting, wishing, oh, I wish I had a knife that would do this. I wish I had a knife that would do that. As the issue presents itself, this is a knife that I feel fully, fully capable of pretty much anything. And uh, that's really what it's all about. It's all about this utilitarian multi-role function that these knives serve by design. Now, whether you choose to use them for that or not, that's entirely up to you. But you've got a warranty that's standing behind it that allows you that freedom to not really have any fear when you're using it. If you do something with the knife in, a, in the normal course of operations, not doing anything ridiculously stupid like trying to, I don't know, maybe stab it into a tree and, and, and use it to stand on or some stupid shit like that. If you were to severely damage or even break this knife in some fashion under any sort of normal use, it not only covers you for a lifetime, but it's it's transferable. If you sell this to your brother, your cousin, your uncle, your buddy, and 10 years from now, he says, oh man, I rolled the edge on that thing or I chipped the edge when I was cutting something. What the hell do I do? Eric's going to take that thing back, whatever is left of it, and if it can't be refurbished, then he's going to provide you with a brand new knife as a replacement because that's exactly the kind of thing that these knives are designed to do. They're designed to be used, and if for some reason it doesn't survive, he's going to make sure that you're covered. Because let's face it, these are not cheap knives. I don't want to give the impression that these are inexpensive in any way. These are made in the U.S., so you're going to pay a premium for that. If he was contracting out and sending these out to uh, Taiwan or China or something like that, these would probably be about 30 to 40% less expensive at retail. But sometimes you do want to pay extra for that U.S. made clout, and that's understandable. And the thing is, when you're paying that extra money, it hurts a little bit up front. You're thinking, oh man, $400 plus for these Phobos knives, is this really going to be worth it? Is it going to survive? Because... We've all been through that. We've all found knives that we thought looked really, really great and may have even gotten some great rave reviews that really weren't made for actual use. They were pretty to look at. They were cool to use for uh, Instagram photos as your backdrop or some shit like that, but these are made to be used. So whether you're going to use it or you're just going to carry it or you're just going to admire it, this is the kind of knife that is worth the investment. And through playing with these over the time that I've had them now over the past month and actually have been using them, taking them outdoors and putting them to a little bit of a test, probably not as much as you're going to put them through if you're an actual active outdoors person, 
I have full confidence in saying that these are some of the best fixed blades that I've ever had a chance to handle. And that's coming from somebody that makes their own custom fixed blades. Now, while I charge a hell of a lot more, I don't see a lot of my customers out there doing what people are doing with these Phobos knives. And on the rare occasion, I get a picture from somebody where they're, they're out there and they've field dressed an animal or something with one of my knives. I feel it's great, but that's not really what most people are doing. This is the kind of knife where no matter what your goals are, it should fit, meet, and exceed all of your expectations. So without any further ado, and hopefully without any further lawnmower noises from my next door neighbor who, for some reason, every time I hit that record button, he decides it's time to make a full day event out of mowing my lawn. So if there's a little bit of a drone in the background, just try to tune it out. I'm hoping my microphone isn't quite that sensitive and it may not pick it up. But either way, let's get down to it and see what we think. Phobos Alaris, and this is done in CPM 3D. And I gotta tell you, this is something that came as a huge surprise to me. How much I really, I instantly liked this knife. So the packaging is as follows, nice styrofoam insert, and then all of your information, warranty, stickers, and there will be a little, little tin of Wicked Wax inside. I had a chance to uh, talk on the phone with the owner of Wicked Wax, Fred. Super nice guy. And he's got some really cool plans for this brand. He's doing some really, really cool shit. Basically, for those that don't know, Wicked Wax is a corrosion inhibitor. And... Used in the same way that you would use Ren Wax, except this is made of all natural materials and it is actually food safe. So if you want to prevent corrosion on your knives, they have, uh, Eric has included a sample size of Wicked Wax inside the packaging on, I think, pretty much everything. And then that way you're able to get it on the blade, protect the blade, and not have to worry about, oh, is it food safe? Can I actually use that to to do food prep and stuff like that. Yes, you absolutely can. So, protect your shit, especially with 3V. 3V rusts really, really easily. And even though you've got this PVD black oxide coating, remember that your edge is exposed. And also, every time you cut with a knife, you are losing a tiny bit of surface material from that edge. So every time you're done using it, put the Wicked Wax back on there and continue giving the protection that the knife deserves. Now, for those that don't remember or you did not see the initial video that I did with all three of the Phobos knives, this one had a lot of marks on that, that black oxide finish, that black PVD finish. And now all that's left are just little bit of streaks from when I was trying to clean it and left a couple of streaks behind. This finish held up very, very good for the light work that I put it through. And it was all stuff that would normally mar a, a finish or scratch up a blade. And like I said, I'm not Boana the Great White Hunter. I'm not out there doing a whole bunch of stuff on a regular basis and abusing any knives that I have. But this one just called to me. This one I felt like the way that this presented itself, it would be a more fair treatment to do the review with a little bit of activity, a little bit of cutting, a little bit of chopping, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I got a little bit worried in the, in the middle of doing it. I was like, oh man, there's a lot of crap all over this blade. 
I'm hoping I didn't ruin the finish before I photograph it and before I do the review on it. Cleaned it up and it cleaned up really, really nicely. I was very surprised. It's not 100% flawless like it was the day it arrived and it never will be on a knife that you're ever going to use, but it held up very, very well. I'm very impressed with how the, uh, the coatings held up. You can see a couple little marks up there, nothing tragic. And again, for a knife that you're gonna be using, having a little bit of scarring on there isn't the worst thing in the world anyway. It's just not gonna be a museum showpiece. All right, let's talk some TLDW. Let's talk some pros and cons. Pros for me are going to be the overall size of the knife. While it's a good full-size knife, it's not ridiculously huge. It's got a good blade stock thickness. It's got a nice balance to it. Feels really good in the hand. And I love the way it cuts. I love the blade, the, the bevel geometry and the edge geometry. Very, very well done. What you're looking at is a, a flat to convex grind. So it has the, the look and mostly the feel of a flat grind, but there's a slight convex to it. And that's going to help it push through things, do a lot of push cutting. You've got that type of edge where it just comes straight down, super, super sharp. And the secondary bevel, which is your final edge, is also going to be done in a convex as well. So this is even going to feel sharper than it probably should for its thickness behind the edge. I found this to be a really good performer in that aspect. You've got some really great jimping and really nice textures and shapes to the G10 scales. So it feels very comfortable in the hands with no hot spots. And it's still just square enough to keep it from torquing in your hand. And I don't really see it being a problem slipping out of your hand, slipping out of your grip in any way. And I like having this the scales cut back to expose the rear of the tang or the pommel, because if you wanted to actually uh, bang something with it, you can without cracking your scales. This makes for a great attitude adjuster if you happen to be in a one-on-one uh, -on -one situation with a rambunctious individual. And I don't know that it works as a glass breaker, but I'm sure if you hit kind of uh, at an angle, this would probably be a good enough of, a, of an impact to shatter glass. I'm not going to test that because well, car windows are friggin' expensive. I'll let somebody else do that torture test. All right, cons. I think if you're looking at this knife as an EDC carry, the weight might be a con for you. It is a big bubba. It's got some weight to it. It's got a fat booty. Any other cons I really can't come up with because I haven't run into any issues that I don't like on this knife. I like how it feels. I like how it cuts. I like its balance point. I like everything about it. Now, I'm not saying this is the prettiest knife in the world because it's not. It's not even the uh, nicest looking of all the Phobos designs. But I very much like the blade shape. I like how it looks, but I like how it performs even better. And that really is the most important thing, especially on a fixed blade. Um, I don't really want to call the Kydex sheath a con, but some of the other models, you get this very high-grade leather that is more expensive and more time-intensive to manufacture. I like the presentation of that, but the Kydex might just be a little bit more practical for you in actual use. And I do know people that prefer Kydex over leather. And as long as you're taking care of it, as long as you're blowing it out, making sure there's no debris inside of the sheath, you're probably not going to scratch up your blade. But do keep that in mind. Kydex is like the devil's glove. If there's a way to ruin a finish on top of a knife, a Kydex sheath is probably the best way to do it because they don't collapse at all once you've taken the knife out. So stuff can make its way in there easily without you ever knowing it. And any little bits of sand or anything else that gets in there could tear up your finish, but it's probably not going to be that big of an issue. All right, TLDW aside, let's get into the specs. Get them listed off for you. The, uh, the Alaris is a drop point blade design. 
Overall length of 10 and a half inches. Blade length of 5 inches. So that goes back to what I was saying earlier, where it's a good full-size knife without being oversized. If this were a 6 and a half inch blade, I don't know that I would really ever find a use for it not being a massive outdoor person, not going camping every month, not going on nature trails and hikes and hunting and fishing and all that stuff on a regular basis, I probably would never have a need for a knife that's quite that large. This one, I feel that I can fit that within most of the, the things that I would want to do on a regular basis as an average individual. Your blade stock is 200 thousandths of an inch thick, so yes, just under a quarter inch thick, and it feels it. You feel every ounce of weight in that bad boy. And it is uh, made from CPM3V, so you've got a blade steel that's going to hold a good edge, but most importantly, it's a very, very tough steel. So as I mentioned in the, in the intro, you can do some light chopping, and not really worry about the, the quality of the edge afterwards. It's probably going to hold up just fine. And um, that's pretty much it for the specs. Oh, you get a Kydex sheath with it. And uh, the lifetime warranty, as I had mentioned earlier, which is transferable beyond your life to somebody else's life. All right, let's get back into this. And talk about the things that I like and the way this knife makes me feel. I have to go back and mention like I did on the Tier 1 BC video when we talk about design. Laying out your overall template, your overall shape for the, the knife and figuring out where your bevels are going to be. When I looked at this initially, I thought, man, I would have expected that bevel to be much, much, much higher to be a true slicing machine, but that's where that convex bevel comes into play, the convex edge especially, because it allows, if this was just a straight flat grind knife with a, a typical edge on it, the, done on the same flat platen, it may have a hard time pushing through some things. This thing is actually really nice and slicey. I particularly enjoyed what it was doing when I was trying to feather the sticks a little bit. I wasn't trying to do a real thorough professional job, so my kindling was a little bit thicker than probably most people would have done theirs, but it kind of went right through it nice and easy. I was really, really happy with that. I did cut down a lot of cardboard boxes with this because I still had a proliferation of cardboard in my garage from when I moved six months ago, and it just needed to get done and out and into the recycling, and this was really the perfect knife for that. I had great control because I've got a nice big handle on it. And even though it's contoured and everything where it's comfortable with no sharp edges to it, it felt it stayed squared up in my hand. It didn't want to kind of float around and move around as I was pushing through some of the thicker boxes. It just performed flawlessly for everything I wanted it to. Now, for those of you that use your tip for anything, you're doing any little bit of carving or you're, you're kind of chipping out some wood or something, you've got a pretty thick, pretty reinforced tip here. So I wouldn't have any fears doing some light prying on some medium to soft material. You know, don't go, you know, doing crazy shit with it. Like I said in the other video, it's not like the jaws of life. Don't go trying to pry open car doors with it. But if, if I were out somewhere and I had to stab this into a can of beans and, and, and pry that open because I didn't have a can opener with me, this would be a great knife for that. I feel that it's got the strength and the material, by the way. The 3V is going to certainly be good for that. That I think that I would have the confidence to do something stupid like that with a knife that I normally wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't pull a folder out of my pocket and jam it into a can of soup and uh, try to cut it open. It's just not what they're made for, and they're not, they're not built for that. And this, while of course that's not its intended purpose, I feel could certainly handle that sort of use without a problem. When we get down to how does the knife make me feel, it's not always about the practical applications of a blade. Sometimes a design just has to sing to you. The materials that are being used, 
have to be attractive to you. The, the way that it feels in the hand has to excite you in some way. Because as a collector, it's going to come down to these things. A lot of collectors, you may have hundreds of knives. You have a lot of different choices whenever you decide you want to use a knife for something. So I don't think that every single solitary purchase has to be about, well, what's the utilitarian factor? Yeah, Eric designs his knives for that because of his experience in the military and using these knives out in the elements and out in those survival situations where you are going to rely on a knife more so than the common person will. And that's great. It's great that you're, it's, it's like people that own Jeeps. How many people do you know that take their Jeep really, truly off-roading? Probably not very many. And in, in the grand scheme of things, maybe 20% of people that own Jeeps actually do Jeep shit. And it's great that they have something that they enjoy for the reasons that they enjoy it. And then also they know that if they decided they wanted to go do those more extreme things, that it will actually do it. And that's really where something like this comes in. You may never have to rely on your knife to survive, but it's nice to know that you own something in your collection that should it ever come down to that, that it actually will perform to that level. Hey guys, sorry for the interruption, but I promise I will make this very, very brief. I want to thank those of you that have joined and become channel members. You are helping to support the channel and helping to continue the growth. And if you've been considering supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form, because I do not have channel sponsors, uh, I don't shill anybody's products, I don't get paid for anything, I don't do affiliate links, so everything is completely self-funded. If you'd like to help out and watch the channel grow and get more great content coming your way, please do consider becoming a member. Man, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And who knows in the next 5, 10, 20 years where we're going to be. Is it going to be some post-apocalyptic thing like we see in the movies? Maybe. It's unlikely, but man, we are we're heading that way down toward nuclear war and AI taking over the world and some Terminator shit kind of happening. You don't know. And if you listen to your paranoid prepper friends, they're going to tell you, absolutely the world's going to go to shit in, in three years. And you, if you don't know how to farm and grow your own food, if you don't know how to kill an animal with your bare hands and, and shit like that, that you're not going to survive and, and all kinds of crazy shit. All I'm saying is while it's highly unlikely, this is the knife that I would want to have with me doing that kind of thing. I feel that it's going to, perform at the level that I would need it to, where I can rely on it and it not really be a second thought. Anyway, that's ramblings from a very suburban type dude. I'm not in the military. I'm not outdoors. I'm not out camping and hiking and hunting and fishing and all that shit. I'm looking at this as a knife collector that appreciates good quality knives, good quality construction, looking at it as a knife maker and designer and looking at the things that were done really, really well on this to be just a good knife, taking away the specificity of things like this to use with a fire starter. I, I guess that's the some kind of bow method where you put a stick on there and then you, you roll it back and forth and you need something to hold it in place. I don't know. I don't do that shit. Couldn't tell you. All I know is it's not in the way when I'm handling the knife. So I'm perfectly happy with it being there because if for some reason I ever did need to do something like that, I know I could. I have a tool that will give me the ability to do so. Anyway, that's my ramblings on this knife. Uh, thank you, Eric, again for sending these out. I've had a great time uh, playing with these and testing these and just sitting down and enjoying them. I think they're fantastic. And I hope everybody gets a chance. If you're a fixed blade connoisseur, I hope you get the chance to get one of these in your hands. It is a little bit of an investment. You're starting around 320 bucks. I don't think that's insane in any way, shape, or form. But I know a lot of guys would prefer to spend $100 or less on their fixed blades. 
pony up the extra cash. I promise you, the second you open the box and you put it in your hand and feel it, you'll understand where the additional cost is. And with that, I'm out of here, and I'll see you on the next video.